Hello and welcome to another episode of Contemporary Living with Farmer and Hill. We are so glad that you made this decision to invest the next 30 minutes with us and we promise it will be a power packed show. Isn't that right, Andre? Absolutely. So we're <laughs> looking forward to tonight's show. We thank you for tuning in to Absolutely. Contemporary Living. Uh, we really appreciate our viewers as we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just so excited. Uh, we're looking forward to bringing you some new content. Um, each and every month now, and you may get a couple of extra videos for us Woo -woo! from us throughout the uh, the <laughs> month. So that's the good thing. But before we get started, you know we like to have our housekeeping notes. Um, you can follow <laughs> us on YouTube and Facebook at Contemporary Living with Farm and Hill. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to get some inspiration and encouragement, you can follow my wife on Facebook as well. She's putting out content each and every day on facebook as well mm -hmm. also you can also find us on comcast we still on comcast channel 19 every thursday night at 9 p.m central standard time and if you have any questions or you got any um you want to attend some of our events that we're having mm -hmm. this year please please hit us up with an email at farmer farming hill at gmail.com yep. so yeah so my wife she's going to jump right into tonight's message and we're going to have a blast tonight so we're looking forward to tonight's lesson so Babe, what you gonna start us off with tonight? I am going to start us off with finance. Are you ready to get financially lit? There's yes. nothing that brings me so much joy than helping people get out of debt. So I'm gonna bring the same information to you that I talk to other people about. And today we're gonna talk about snowball versus avalanche. Mm. Okay, so there's snowball paying off your debt versus avalanche paying off your debt. We're gonna talk about which debt payoff strategy is best. But we're gonna start with what is the debt snowball. Okay. Now that the debt snowball is when you make minimum payment on all your credit cards, uh, except the ones with the largest balance. So you're going to pay as much as you can on the card with the smallest balance until it's paid off. Mm -hmm. So that is the debt snowball. So you know how you take a snowball and you continue to build it up, build it up. And yes. that's what that debt snowball is for. Now the debt avalanche is exactly how it sounds. Here you're going to make minimum payments on all your credit cards except the ones with the highest interest. Mm -hmm. Now that one you're going to pay as much as you can on the card with the highest interest rate until the card is paid off. So really the two, what the two are is one is you're going to pay off the one that's the smallest and the other is, is the one that has the highest interest rate. And we're going to see this in action okay. right here. Here's the debt avalanche in action. So take a look at these three cards. You've got a MasterCard, a Target, and a car loan. So look at the interest rate on these cards, 22%, 19%, and 5%. Now that 22 and 19, that is pretty significant. So what they did in order for the debt avalanche to work, you have to take the highest interest rate card, which is the 22%. Look what they did. They paid $75 on it or the, the minimum due was $75. So once they paid that off, then they went to the target and they start paying off the 19%, $35. And it adds on and on and on until you go to the car loan where you took the 75 and 35 and added it with the 200 mm. and you got 310 dollars on your new car loan payment so that's the avalanche it's the ones with the highest interest rate so that's the debt avalanche in action the debt snowball in action you're going to take the smaller bill so you're going to take your medical bill it's 550 dollars you've paid that off now you're going to take the the next credit card which is 2500 that you owe you're going to add the old payment of the medical bill and add it to your credit card so now instead of paying 63 dollars of the minimum payment minimum payment because you've paid off the medical bill you can add 500 fifty dollars to that credit card and it just goes on and on and on so those are the two difference and that's the debt snowball in action so basically what i'd like you to do is just choose one and go for it you can use the debt snowball when you need to see quick results to keep you motivated because you're paying off those smaller credit card debts at a faster rate mm. or you can use the debt avalanche that's because you're paying off the ones with the highest interest rate uh, in order, in order for you, and if you want to stay there, 
you don't you can stick to a plan long enough i would go for the avalanche but if you need to stay motivated choose the debt snowball if you need the avalanche then go and you can stick to a plan and you don't need to see those quick results go with the avalanche excellent information mm -hmm. excellent information now let me ask you melissa maybe you can help our viewers for those that have credit cards uh, what utilization should they be at okay so your utilization on your credit card should be 30 percent or less okay 30% or less. And we can, I'll talk about that on an episode because people don't understand their utilization. Right yeah. now, to get out of debt, we, we won't even talk about those things. And the reason why is because people just don't even understand this method and just how they can easily pay off their bills and how, how easy it is. But 30% right. to answer your question, 30% utilization or yeah. less. Yeah, and I figured that the uh, yeah. reason I asked that question because nine times, you know, just listening to your message right and um, as I began to listen to you speak and talk about this here I'm sure a lot of people they have went over their utilization yeah that's why they got to you know start on the avalanche of the snowball effect I can tell you that I have been at 88 percent you know when I was addicted to credit cards right, right. I've been at 88 percent uh utilization before and it's just not a good look it's not a good look as you as they as we're changing how they're looking at your credit scores and things like that it is not a good look so to answer your question and for those of you out there watching utilization should be at 30 percent or less and that or less i'm going to emphasize that if you can get it down that yeah because it's going to give you a higher credit score all right all right excellent excellent all right so we're going to move on to we're going to talk about some assets some eight valuable assets so as you've seen melissa talking about the snowball and avalanche nine times out of ten if you're dealing with the snowball and avalanche effect you probably have brought things that was not of value. So that's why you're in a predicament that you're in. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand medical, you know, we have medical bills. We all get sick and stuff like that, which is understandable. But like we're talking about the utilization of credit cards, sometimes we overspend. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about some eight valuable assets today. I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to talk about property, Melissa. We're going to talk about some land. We're going to oh, talk about wow. some trees, ponds, yeah. livestock. Regular stocks, and we're going to talk about <laughs> business ownerships and talent. So let's get right into it. So first, one of the first valuable assets you want to, want to have, which we believe that you should have, is business ownership. I believe that you that everybody should have some type of business. And now I know a lot of people say, well, everybody can't be business owners. Well, I disagree. You can be a business owner part-time and still have a full-time job. And guess what? Your part-time business may eventually grow to something big it may become huge where you can leave your nine to five and you can start working for yourself mm -hmm. all right the asset number two we believe in investment properties okay so if you can get an investment property something that you could purchase and have a tenant rent it out that's extra income for you so that's an asset so you're not just spending your money on you know the nikes the gucci bags and stuff like that or the red bottoms or just buying all these extravagant things well you can invest in property so i always recommend people look into the investment property now don't get me wrong if you got the money to get the red bottles you Thank can get you. those because i'll still get a cover <laughs> with the red bottles you've seen the way she'll give me that look <laughs> so so some the, people can't uh, afford uh, red right, bottles right. some people can afford them you can afford it don't worry about it these right so investment <laughs> property is good because you got to think about it if you say for instance you purchase this beautiful home here and we're going to say that, that is a pretty house. right we're going to say that your monthly mortgage is a thousand dollars and we're going to say that you put a tenant in here and they're paying eighteen hundred dollars a month for this four bedroom two bathroom house all right so once you pay that thousand dollar mortgage to your bank each and every month that the tenant's going to pay for because that's your tenant they pay you monthly for their rent you still have an eight hundred dollar cash flow mm -hmm. all right so remember that there as we move on we are big on land for crops food and water this is very important. I believe this is vital. My wife and I, we just purchased some land out in Indiana. Um, the good thing about the land, we found out today that, you know, it has all different type of fish in the pond. So guess what? We can go out there and do some fishing and eating. And then um, my wife and I... have never I, fished before. Yeah, so, yeah. So <laughs> It'll be a new experience. We may have to get her, get her a net so she can get out there and, and catch some fish or something like that. So when we catch our first fish, we're going to come back and talk about it on our show. And don't forget, you can also, um, if you grow your food, you can sell it as well. So, you know, there's nothing like organic mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. So remember that. Also, another asset that people sleep on, owning land with trees. We looked at some land um, about, a, about a month ago, and this land had, was filled with trees. It had walnut trees. It had some hickory trees. It had oak trees. It had maple trees. And if you understand trees, you know that your that 
furniture is made from trees, tools made from trees, maple syrup. One of the, one of the trees was a maple tree. So guess what? You got maple syrup as a means of food. And guess what? During this time of year, you probably want to light your fireplace. Well, if you own some property with trees, you ain't got to go to Walmart and buy no trees. You can just cut down some of your trees and throw it in your fireplace mm -hmm. as well. So, so look at, you know, things like this and all oh, the walnut trees. Now, we know walnuts are expensive. I don't know about you. You can go anywhere right now about some walnuts. You're going to pay some money for walnuts. So if you got a walnut tree, something like that on your property, that's, that's good to have. Also, don't forget and sleep on your livestock. So, you know, if you like your cattle, if you like chicken, I know we buy a lot of eggs. Um, stuff like that is good to have. Livestock, livestock is good to have because, you know, my wife, she loves pork chops and she loves steak and stuff like that. So, you know, <laughs> really? I got to throw it under the bus. Really? Really? <laughs> I love pork chops. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so, but, <laughs> I do, I do. But, but livestock is good to have. And once again, not only that, you can sell some of your livestock as well, and you can make a profit as well. So these are assets. This is something that you can pass on to your kids' mm -hmm. kids. Okay? Also, catfish pond. If you can find some, like a land that has a pond or a lake like we found, you can go out there and you can catch some catfish. Uh, we also see how to learn how to you know, gut the fish as well. Mm. And, and, you know, okay. get, get, get the skin <laughs> off of it, you know, all that good stuff. So she's going to be learning how to fish this year. She's going to be learning how to uh, clean some fish. So we, I'm going to let y'all know how that go. All right. So you yeah, something like that. And these, like I said, these are acid. These are ways not only you, this, not, this is good for survival. The other long is good if you want to make some extra income as well. Mm -hmm. All right. And you can play the loan game, the stock market so i know a lot of people still you know they you want to learn the stock market do some research I always go to like youtube or something like that and you can get some valuable information mm -hmm. on the stock market mm -hmm. so remember that there uh, my, my wife i think she did a video on acorn actually i did on acorns yeah. and i i i would i'm gonna have to follow up because they can see how my account has grown just for yeah a couple of months of investing but yeah. like but like you said it's the stock market is a long game so yeah, so it's just yeah, something you can think about as well. Time. It's over yeah. time. So mm -hmm. it, don't, it don't happen overnight. And actually, all of this stuff we learn it happens don't happen overnight. Yeah. It's all about it's a it's a step by step process. Yeah. A lot of times we want our wealth overnight. We want it right now. I think we listened to a message today that the lady was talking about. We live in a microwave generation where we yeah. just gotta have stuff right now. Absolutely. All right, and then one of the, and I'm big on this using your talents and your gifts. Mm -hmm. God has given each and every one of us up uh, each and every one of us talents. Make sure that you utilize your talents. Don't be that person that bury your talents and then you go to the grave with your talents. Invest in yourself. We're big on investing in yourself. We, we invest in everybody but ourselves. We invest in family, friends. We invest in a lot of these big name companies out there. You know, I always tell people, instead of you buying the $300, $400 Nike shoes, why don't you buy some Nike stock? Mm -hmm. You know, so we got to look at it from an investment standpoint as well. So definitely invest in yourself. And I think those seven things were great because you show the difference in what's an asset versus the things that people would normally buy, like the red bottoms and the Gucci. Yes. And, and and a six hundred dollar car payment that you know yeah. people just see. Uh, no, the, that's a lot. Investing in yourself, starting with those assets, is really important. I think you hit it on the head. Yeah. So I hope that was um, educational. Yes. I hope, hope that was able. To, hope that was able to help somebody. Absolutely. All right. All right. We're gonna go into a more somber Ooh. topic because uh, this is happening. And it's happening at a rapid rate of speed. <clears throat> Today, we're going to uh, talk about depression. Mm. And there are many people that suffer from depression. I think I have a stat here. Uh, but the things that you need to know is that depression is a real mental health condition. And there's that number. It affects more than 16 million American adults each year. Another thing is depression can occur to anyone at any age and to people of any race or ethnic group. Now, of course, I'm always concerned about black people. One of the things I found, or African Americans, it, and one of the stats show that among many black people and other groups as well, mental health issues are often not considered to be medical issues. 
They consider it to be a character flaw or a sign of weakness or a private matter. So they don't even, a lot of, a lot of us, a lot of African Americans, a lot of black people don't even look at depression as a real mental health condition. That is a medical condition. And then last but not least, here's a, another factoid. Teen depression is on the rise. So not only do we have the 16 million American adults each year that suffer from depression, but teen depression is on the rise. And I thought this is something worth talking about, and yeah. I thought it was something you know worth, worth looking into. So um, when it comes to depression, you just can't wish it away. You just can't say, oh, you know, it'll let me just sleep on it and things like that. Because there's a difference between being sad and being depressed. Depression is a medical condition. So you don't just wish it away. And some of the things that you can, that some of the characteristics that come out are you get no pleasure or joy in life. Everything feels hopeless. Your, your self-esteem is low or you just don't have any at all. Sleeping becomes problematic. You can't sleep and you don't understand why. Your energy level has decreased. It's low. You're either overeating or undereating to compensate whatever these feelings of depression are. Uh, you have trouble focusing or concentrating. Alcohol and drug abuse can come into the picture. You're constantly crying or agitated suicidal thoughts. And, you know, they link depression with suicidal thoughts and then unexplained aches and pains. So these are some of the symptoms or characteristics that can occur when you're depressed. So some of you may be going through this and not even know that it's depression. And that's why you do have to seek a professional, you have to seek medical att attention because it is, depression is a medical condition and you just can't wish it away. So here are some possible causes, genetics. It could be, it could be, you know, passed down through generations that depression is a common occurrence, you know, something that happens. Life events can, can really throw you off into, you know, a significant emotional event is what I call it, a C that can throw you into a depression. Hormonal changes as women change, as men change, these changes can cause these mental breakdowns. Certain illnesses can cause you to go into a depression. Of course, we keep mentioning drug and alcohol abuse because, you know, sometimes we, we do do that. And then some medication. So those are some possible causes uh for depression but we don't really know why now this is the when to seek professional help now if your symptoms of sadness or of the or depression of depression are causing problems with relationship work or your family and you you can't see a clear solution that's a sign that you may dep be depressed and need to see a doctor seek medical attention if it's if you hadn't had a significant, if you've had a significant change in your mood and your physical symptoms, so like you're, you just want to lay down all the time and you don't feel good, you feel hopeless and you know, you experience this most of the time throughout the day and then it lasts for weeks or longer, you've got to see your doctor. This is serious. And then if you are self-medicating, see a lot of us, you know, use drugs or alcohol or using other addictive behaviors like they don't go home or they'll do something else they'll put their attention on something else though they're self-medicating you've got to take care of the problem you can't self-medicate to feel normal please 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 see your doctor it's imperative that you do that and if you're feeling this way right now Right now, what I want you to do, you can go to betterhelp.com and get some online counseling. They're 24 seven and they give online counseling. Or like I said, that, that link between depression and suicide is really serious. There's a national suicide prevention hotline. So there is help for you. And that number is 1-800-373-373. 8255. I'll repeat that again. 1-800-373-8255.
five. And if you, you can also go to the suicidepreventionlifeline.org. You can also go online, suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And I'm just going to say that really, this really quickly. I have went to, remember I went to, uh, was, I think it was San Diego yeah. when I went to go see, uh, Lisa Nichols and, uh, we had like a group thing. And one of the, one of the ladies in the group, she worked on the suicide hotline. And I was telling her how I wanted to help women veterans and do different things like that she says please do because she's been working on the suicide hotline yeah. for a couple of years now and over these years she's seen a rise in women veterans being depressed and on the verge of suicide so that really spoke to my heart it placed it upon my heart to just make sure i'm getting the information out there making sure i'm helping these women and that is why you know debt that's why I like to talk about debt because that can lead to depression also. But the most important thing, if you don't get anything else out of this slide on depression, get help now. There's the information. And that's all I have to say about that. Wow, that was an excellent segment, very powerful. Um, and people got to understand, understand people that you are, you are loved. Yes. And sometimes you may feel like people don't love you, you know, but people love you. Um, and, you know, and, just, you know, just continue just to be strong. And like Melissa gave out the information, you know, for you guys to, you know, contact somebody for help. Your life is valuable. Your life is important. And we need you here. Your family needs you here. Right. Because you may be a person that can reach out and touch somebody mm -hmm. as well. Everyone has yeah. purpose. Yeah, right? everybody has purpose. So mm -hmm. understand that you have a purpose and that God did not make no mistake. Not You're right. here for a reason. We love you. Your family love you. Your kids love you. And no matter what your situation is, God is able, he's just and faithful enough to make things right, Absolutely. to make things better. And just remember that there, that Christ paid all. He paid the ultimate price for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And you have all that you need. And you may not think that you don't have what you need, but trust me, you have what you need. Mm -hmm. God's grace is sufficient, and he may not come the way you think he should come. He may not come when you think he should come. But I can rest to assure you this. He will come Absolutely. and he will answer you because he's just just faithful and just to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, David, I, I think it was, I believe it was David. And he talked about God and how he said it. If I make my head big in hell, God was just and faithful yep. enough to deliver him. And mm -hmm. I'm just paraphrasing that scripture. Mm -hmm. And as we go on, since we own the scriptures, um, take control of your life. Ironically, <laughs> take control of your life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You are the master of your life. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people about the story of Bruce Leroy in The Last Dragon. And Bruce Leroy, um, he was looking for the master. And his sensei sent him out on this journey to find the master. And he's going all over and he's wrecking havoc. He's kicking in doors, trying to jump on people because he was looking for the master. But all that time, as the movie went on, Bruce Leroy didn't realize that he was the master. Until one day, reality smacked him dead in the face. And he was going through. And he was in a fight and a battle of his life, like many of you. And what happened was, he began to realize, hold on. I'm the master. I am the master. All this time I've been searching. And a lot of times we're searching through other people. We're, we're looking for somebody to bail us out. We're right. looking for the Democrats to bail us out. We, we're looking for the Republicans to bail us out. But all the time... The answer is within you. God has given you power. And as I go on, I'm going to take you right to the scriptures as we get ready to close out. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. And I think this scripture is just so fitting as we get ready to close out. For as always, I always start off with 2 Timothy 2.15. For God tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. As we look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, let's look at some truth here. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So understand God has given you two things. He has given you power and he has given you wealth. And understanding that within you, you have all that you need, that God has blessed you. He has given you all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. So no matter what your circumstances is, trust and believe God. I remember how Paul talked about how he went through some things. And, and he talked about how he went to the Lord three times. Three times he went to God. 
and God told him that his grace is sufficient. You look at Job's story. You look at Job. And he trusted and believed in God. He lost his family. He lost his friends. He, lost everything. he was sick. And they came up and told him, Melissa, Job, you might as well curse your God and die. Right. But Job, he believed and trusted in God. He said, Yo, the, 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 though he, uh, what do he say? Though, though, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. So despite of what your circumstances are, despite of what your situation is, trust and believe in God. Mm -hmm. And that's what Job said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And uh, we look at the word power. What does the word power mean? And this is what God has given to you as I close tonight. He has given you the ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially as a faculty or quality. He has given you something. Each and every one of us has a characteristic in us that's different than anybody else in the world. And you think about our DNA, how we all just made differently. Mm -hmm. And one thing you can't duplicate is what? The DNA. And so you think about this here, how God has made you uniquely different. And I hope this message is helping somebody tonight as we wind this message down. But remember, he has given you power. And not only that, he has given you wealth. What is wealth? The ability to do something or act in a particular way. That is what wealth is. And I think I've I used the same definition twice, but uh, I think power kind of gives you the authority over something. Mm -hmm. And so you have the authority, you have the power. So understanding this here, God has given you power and he has given you wealth. And no matter what you're going through, God can bless you. He's going to bless you. And realize this here, that as I close out, that you have all that you need. Yes. You, you have all that you need. And never, never think that you don't. If you got to go pray, go pray. If you got to get out to yourself, get out to yourself. And seek God. And trust me, he's going to answer. And don't be afraid. And don't be afraid, right. If you need help, don't be afraid to ask for help. Right. Don't be ashamed. You know, a lot of times we prideful. Very. And we don't want people to know that we're going through. It's okay to go through. We all human. We all have downfalls. We all have flaws. But guess what? God always, he always answers. Yes. So I just thank God for each and every one of our viewers. Mm -hmm. I thank God for my wife for bringing up this subject of depression tonight because it's very important. And we just thank God for everything he, that he continues to do yes. Excuse me, in our life. We thank God for you, like I said, the viewers that tune in each and every Thursday night, that follow us on Facebook, that, that, that come to us just for encouragement. We may not have everything, but we have each other, and that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. We have, I have my wife, she has me, and we have you, the viewers. And like I said, if anybody, if you want to reach out to us, uh, email us at farminghill at gmail.com. My wife loves mentoring the women. If you're a gentleman, if you're a guy that needs to be, that needs somebody to talk to you, reach out to us. We don't mind meeting you somewhere from co for coffee or, or something like that just to sit down and just give you some advice. And the things that we do, we do it from our heart yeah. and we do it for free. We don't believe in just charging people stuff and, 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 you know, people are talking about they want to empower the community to charge thousands of dollars. Because everything's say. monetized, right? We're not here to monetize. But if we know that one thing, if we could change somebody's life while we're here on earth, yep. and we could save one soul while we're here on earth, our living here has not been in vain. Because we know that the Bible tells us that, that the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul. That's all it takes, one soul. If I save one person, and we reach one person through our lessons tonight, our work here has been done. And as I close it out tonight, as I thank God for this great message, and I thank God for my wife, but as we close it out tonight, we thank God for his unmerited, undeserving favor called grace. For grace is the total absence of any works. You can't work for grace. You can't buy grace. You can't sell it. It is simply what God has given to each and every one of us. Because we believe Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our justification. On behalf of myself and my lovely wife, Melissa, and contemporary living, be blessed. Bye-bye. See you next week. God bless.